All right, kids, this is your benchmark lesson for today, and we're going to try it this way, and hopefully it works. So you should have your um, benchmark book out, the one that's called We the People. That should be with you, and you should have a pencil or um, something to write with also. So I'll take you through this. We'll try it this way for today, and we'll see how it goes. The story today is called Fighters for Our Rights, Alice Paul and Cesar Chavez. And if you remember, we've been talking about um, government and we've been talking about the reasons people participate in government. And this particular article talks about the reasons some people were unable to participate in government through the years. So I'll read it to you and then we'll talk just a little bit about it. Um, if you start at paragraph one, it says, Many Americans have worked hard to make sure that all citizens have the rights promised in the U.S. Constitution. Alice Paul and Cesar Chavez were two leaders in the fight for these equal rights. The heading here says, Alice Paul, it is my right to vote. Before 1920, American women did not have the right to vote. Alice Paul, 1885 to 1977, believed that women should be able to vote. She thought women would be good leaders. After graduating from college, she wanted to address the problem, so she decided to join the suffragist cause to help women get the right to vote. And that's a big word, this suffragist. And what that means is literally people who fought for the right for women to vote. So those people were called suffragists. Paul went to England. She worked alongside women and men suffragists who supported the right of women to vote. Oops, I made a typo there because I recopied it. Who supported the, um, the right of women to vote. They marched in the streets and made speeches. Alice Paul admired how the English suffragists made their opinions known in an active way. Back home, Alice Paul pushed American suffragists to be more like those in England. She believed that it was time for women in the United States to be bolder. Paul helped organize a parade in Washington, D.C. In 1917, around 5,000 supporters from all over the world came to march in it. People filled the city that day. Some were there for the parade. Others were there to watch Woodrow Wilson become the president of the United States. Hopefully I'm in the right spot. I had a column between there. So paragraph six, hundreds of thousands of people watched the parade. Many were unhappy and disagreed with the suffragists. They shouted that women should stay home. Marchers were pushed and tripped. More than 100 went to the hospital. The parade was a success though. It brought attention to the issue of women's voting rights. Alice Paul kept fighting for this cause. She was sent to jail several times, but that did not stop her. A few years later in 1920, the 19th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution was passed. Women finally gained the right to vote. So if you think about this, um, a couple things I wanna mention to you. In 1917, to have 5,000 people come to Washington, D.C. from all over the world was a big deal. Um, back then, the population wasn't as big and travel was much more difficult. So it probably cost those people quite a bit of money to get there. Um, and that's a big deal for people to show up for something like this. It also says that hundreds of thousands of people watch the parade. So think about that for just a minute. If there's 5,000 people marching in it, but hundreds of thousands of people watching, that tells you how very few people actually wanted or supported the right for women to vote. It wasn't very many of them. And you can see they were pushed and tripped, and some of them had to go to the hospital. People were not happy about this. And in comparison, you probably know or have heard a lot about Martin Luther King. Um, it was the same elements in play. People did not want this to happen. People thought it was wrong, and people were not uh, kind about it. Um, so the parade was a success. And again, just like Martin Luther King, I want to point this out to you. Alice Paul went to jail several times. 
for what she believed in because she wanted to help people and she wanted things to be equal between men and women. And again, that's no difference than making that reference to um, Martin Luther King Jr. and his cause for African Americans. Um, so equality was a big deal even before Martin Luther King, it just manifested or came out in different ways. And the caption here reads, Alice Paul and other suffragists celebrating passage of the 19th Amendment, which granted women the right to vote. So again, all of these are pretty big deals. Um, if I go down and read my notes, I'm going to read some things to you and just listen um, so I don't miss anything. It says, uh, we've been reading about some of the rights and responsibilities of being a United States citizen. Not all citizens always had the rights we do today. Fighters for our rights, Alice Paul and Cesar Chavez, tells about two leaders who fought for more equal rights for citizens. Oops, and I think I just uh, went to the wrong page. So I'm going to click back here if I can, and I'm going to try and get to the right spot. Sorry about that. Uh, when we read Election Day, we focus on evaluating supporting evidence from the text to determine the main idea. We're going to practice this again today. Remember that identifying the main idea of the text is central to understanding. If you, What they're saying is if you don't understand the main idea, you're not going to understand what the author is writing or why they wrote it. Um, we pointed out some subheadings. So again, this is the title, and then we have a subheading here, Alice Paul, It's My Right to Vote. Um, those separate sections of the text. They're similar to titles, but not quite the same. The subheadings tell what each section will be about. The subheading Alice Paul, It Is My Right to Vote, tells me this section will focus on voting rights, and it will tell me more information about Alice Paul. And then um, this is where you will need your book and your pencil handy. So I see some important details in the first paragraph, so I will underline them. These sentences tell me the problem that women didn't have the right to vote and why Alice Paul got involved. Important details from other paragraphs tell me how she helped the movement. So I will go through and underline these and I will just have you do the same in your book. And the first one I'm going to have you underline is right here. It says American did, women did not have the right to vote. Alice Paul believed that women should be able to vote. That's a pretty important part of this particular page. So I'm going to have you underline that. And then um, it talks a little bit about why she felt that way. But it also says, so she decided to join the suffrage suffragist movement. And that's another important detail that tells us um, or supports the main idea that she believed it was women's right to vote. And then kids, the last thing I'm going to have you do is on your notes section um, that has the little lines over here, but it's on this side of your page. I'm just going to have you write this main idea. Uh, Alice Paul believed women had the right to vote. We want to keep it simple, um, but we also want to make sure we include the person's name and specifically what they believed in. Now, other things in the article talk about uh, how she went through that process, but the main idea of this particular article is that this person wanted women to have the right to vote and they did not at the time. So make sure you write that in, make sure you underline these two sentences and you should be all set for today in this benchmark lesson. Thanks kids, bye.